All right, thanks for tuning in everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. Go ahead and check me out on anthonysmoke.com. As always, if you learned something, leave a comment, hit that like button, and make sure you ring the bell so you get a notification when I drop a new video. And this week, I just joined Instagram, so make sure to follow me at Anthony Smoke Data. So today, I'm in Excel, and I had someone leave a comment on my video showing how to connect um, Excel to SQL Server. And Todd asked, is there a way to create a dynamic query? I pull data on a monthly basis from SQL Server and I need to change the reporting date to the corresponding month. It would be great if I could change the date in a named range and have it linked to the query instead of having to manually edit it. Well, I've got you covered, Todd Schultz. I'm gonna hook you up here. So we are going to, in Excel, create a worksheet. Uh, we're going to pass in uh, some dates. We're gonna change some dates and some cells, and then we're gonna pass that to a dynamic query, which is gonna go to SQL Server and return those values back to Excel. So don't ever think that I don't read the comments and look out for you. I wanna give a big shout out to supporters of the channel. So thank you very much, Esma, for hitting that super thanks and contributing to the channel. Much appreciated. And Doug, you know who you are. I appreciate you reaching out and uh, letting us have that personal one-on-one -on -one talk about data and hopefully it helped solve some of your problems. So I appreciate you, Doug, reaching out as well. Let's get to it. Okay, want to get down to business here. Just want to show you uh, this worksheet that I have in Excel. I think this is a good intermediate uh, data project just to show that you can connect Excel to SQL Server. And I have a video on how to do that if you want to get a little bit more in depth. But not only connect to SQL Server, but use a parameter uh, as well for a dynamic query. So I've got this set up. It's a little report here that's showing quantity and unit price and description of, of, some, uh, of some items. And this comes from the... Um, uh, worldwide importers sample database that uh, that Microsoft has. I will leave a link to the description on where I got this data, and you'll probably it's going to uh, be given to you as a .bak file, so you can check out my video on how to import a .bak file as well. But uh, in any event, here we've got our report is for New York, and let's say we want to change this up for. Um, for the great state of Georgia, where a lot of New Yorkers come down to Atlanta. And let's say I refresh the report. It's going to run. It's going to say, hey, uh, do you approve running this native query? I'm going to say, yes, run. And you'll see this updates to Georgia. Even if I change some of the dates here. So let's say I wanted to start on the 14th and go to the end of the month. Well, no, let's go into... Um, Let's go to February uh, 5th here. Overwrite those contents, refresh the report. Yes, go ahead and run it. And the dates should also update. You see, I've got the 14th here. And if I scroll all the way down, whoops, a little too much. You see, I got some February dates uh, as well. So this is the functionality of the worksheet. And I'm going to go into SQL Server and show you how I set up that query. Okay, we are in SQL Server and I just wanted to show you that um, you know this is how you would set up a query. It doesn't matter which query you use. Feel free to set up any uh, where clause that you would like. Just make sure that there are values that can be changed out uh, when we put this SQL query into Excel like I have with uh, Georgia and the two dates here. So now uh, let's get back into Excel and set this up. Okay, so here we are in Excel. Um, basically, we have some cells here, state, order, begin date, order, end date, and I've got some uh, default uh, values here that we're going to pass. And so uh, first thing you wanna do, and let me say this first, I, I gotta give a shout out to the, the guys over at Dashboard Gear. Uh, that YouTube channel. That's where I got kind of the, the basic underpinnings on on how uh, to put this together. I kind of put my own swag, put my own bells and whistles on top, uh, for instance, with the dates. But got to give a shout out to the Dashboard uh, Gear channel. 
Um, so we want to make sure that we have developer tab here in Excel. If you don't know how to do that, whoops, I'm going to go down here. You can customize the ribbon. And if you see developer on this side, you're going to make sure to add it over here to the main tabs. I already have it, but make sure that you do that so you can get the uh, developer uh, tab here. Okay, so now that we have the developer tab, what I want to do now is I want to record a macro. So anything we do in Excel, uh, if we record a macro, we can see the underlying VBA code behind that. Now, it doesn't always make the most efficient code, but it's always great. It's great for getting a start. So I'm going to go record macro, macro one, that's fine. Say OK. And now whatever I do, it's going to generate some code for me which is uh, very uh, efficient here. So let's go up to data and let's go to get data from database from SQL Server. And so I have to give it my server name. If you don't know that, you can go back to SQL Server, uh, do connect, and then just copy the server name uh, from here. And let's go back to Excel. I'm going to place that uh, there. And then the name of my database is Wide World Importers DW. Let's go into Advanced Options. And so this is where I'm going to paste my query from SQL Server that I showed you earlier. You see we have the state of Georgia here. Uh, you see we have dates. Don't worry about um, you know whether they look like parameters uh, now. It's okay to hard code values here, right? So we're going to say OK. It's going to think about it and we get this, um, you know, just make sure the data looks uh, generally like what you would expect. And let's go to load, load two. And then I'm going to load this to existing worksheet. I'm going to load this into, let's say, C8 right here. And let's hit OK. And it's going to think about that. And you see it generates a query for me. And I'm just going to rename this uh, this query to something a little bit more uh, user friendly. Let's call this sales order query. You see, I have 3,500 uh, rows loaded. So now we've got to remember to uh, stop recording. So if I go here to developer, I'm going to hit stop recording. And so I need to take a look uh, at my uh, generated code. So let's go to Visual Basic. And you'll see, make sure you're in the right, if you have multiple instances of Excel open, make sure you are in the right uh, module here. So, okay, so it put it here on sheet one. You'll see that what I care about, it, it created this uh, connection. So active workbook.queries.add, it added. Uh, it didn't, it didn't uh, you know, put in the sales order query here, but that's okay. It, it did, um, you know, our rename, it, it put down here, it did the rename uh, action, but that's fine. What I really care about, I care about this line right here. We're going to use this um, to put in our values from the, uh, from the sheet. So stick around. So as you'll notice, uh, that macro generated some code and it put it in a subroutine here in the, uh, the module in the Excel sheet. We're going to create our own subroutine. I'm just going to paste in um, some uh, some code here and I want to walk you through it. So I called it uh, subtest. I mean, we could give it a better name, but it is what it is. It doesn't take in any arguments or anything like that. And I've just declared three variables. We got our order state, uh, order start date, and order end dates. So we've got a string for the state and dates for our uh, two date um, of variables here. Dim is just, we're just uh, dimensioning them. Okay, so now here is how we access those values from the sheet. Um, order state is equal to sheets. Sheet one is the name of our sheet dot range D3. That is the cell where we pass the, or where we uh, enter the state value on our uh, Excel sheet. And so likewise for the uh, the start date and the end date, D4 and D5. So we're just passing the values that someone enters there into a variable. It just makes it a little bit more uh, readable uh, for me, at least anyway. And so this active workbook that queries. So uh, remember, we renamed 
our uh, connection, our query to sales order query. And so we can doctor the formula. So if we go back up here, you'll notice that it created, right, dot add, it created query one for us, even though we renamed it. And that's, we, we didn't need to, uh, we don't need this code here. Any of this code up here, we don't really need anymore after the first time um, that it ran through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this um, from after the formula equal. I'm going to take this and I'm going to paste it here. And, you know, I have it... Um, comment it out so it doesn't give me any, uh, you know, craziness. <laughs> so it's commented out for now, but for our sales order query, the formula, and you'll notice all these CHR 13s and CHR 10s, these are uh, carriage returns and line feeds. We don't really need this. So what I'm going to do, I mean, you don't have to do this. It's just, I don't like looking at it. I'm going to just delete that let source okay and you may wonder what is this so all of this is uh, m code that power query uses think of m code is just a way to prepare uh, the data before it gets added into the the power bi uh, query model so this isn't a lesson on uh, m code uh, but just wanted to let you know what you were looking at. And again, we don't need all these carriage return line feeds, but I'm just going to, I'm going to leave that alone for now. I just fixed those uh, initial ones. So if you'll notice, let the source equal to the SQL database, that is uh, the name of our server and it's in double quotes here. It has to be in double quotes. Uh, that is the name of our uh, database that I want to start with. And this is the query that we've uh, that we've entered, and all of these line feeds here. It's just probably because when I pasted it into um, that initial uh, box when we were making the connection, um, you know, there's there's a line feed there. I don't have them all all on the same line, but regardless, we can leave them there. What I really care about, um, I'm looking for where we put in our here we go state right. So see where state province equal Georgia in, in the where clause. We need to replace that, right? We need to replace that with our uh, variable um, that we've defined. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to do one of these here. So we're going to perform a little uh, surgery. I'm going to in that there, and then I'm going to start appending in and let's get rid of Georgia. Well, let's not get rid of Georgia. I live here, but uh, let's call this order state. So this is our variable. And then I'm going to come back in here and then we're going to uh, start that up here. So what I've done is um, this, I've ended the string. I put in our variable. So it'll be smart enough to change that dynamically. And then we're picking back up a pending. And so it's important when I'm using a character to have uh, single single tick marks here. So this will be enclosed in single ticks and you'll see what that looks like uh, when we run this. But I need to do that for my state. And then I also need to do that for the order date. So same thing here. I'm going to do this a uh, uh, couple more times here. I'm going to close this out. Put that, um, get rid of this. And I believe I call this uh, order start date, order start date, pin that, and there we go. And then I want to come down here to this value as well. This is the same thing. It's going to be order end date. You know what? I'm just going to copy this and where are we? I'm going to get rid of this. And I know this needs to be end date. Instead of start, we're going to go with uh, end date here and make sure that that looks good. Now, it's not going to give me any errors because this is a big comment, but I just want to take a look at it. Instead of a hard-coded value here, you see that we have a, a, vari a variable in here. So now let's see what happens when we take this off of our... Uh, take this off of comments and try and compile it. Okay, moment of truth here. Let's see if we did this surgery right. This will not give us any issues. 
And if I go to debug compile, it likes it. Okay, so no errors. So basically, just to recap what we've done, we've uh, dimensioned or declared some variables, assigned the values from our Excel sheet to those variables, uh, went up into this macro here and took out the formula, right? Basically where our uh, SQL query is and put it into our um, uh, line of code here. So for our, our query, our sales order query dot formula, we pasted those values in here and did some surgery to take out the hard coded values and put in the, uh, uh, the dynamic variables, the dimensions that we assigned here. And so the last thing we need to do here is um, say sales order query dot refresh that will activate uh, the query, it'll fire it off and enable it to return our results. And so, like I said, I, I, I can't compile it. So that's good. That means that uh, Mikey likes it. And so uh, if I go back in here, so let's insert a button here. So on the developer tab, I'm going to go to insert a form control button. And I get to draw it out here. Let's go ahead and draw that out. And I want to assign this. And so I called this sub test, right? That was the name of the subroutine that we created. I'm gonna say, okay. So all that means is when I click this button, uh, it's going to execute sub test. And so first I wanna edit the text because I just, uh, uh, I like to do that first. Let's call this um, refresh report, all right? And so I wanna make sure that I'm not in design mode so just make sure that you're not in design mode here. And so moment of truth here, let's see if this works. Let's change this to California. I'm just gonna type that out. So it's California uh, for 2015, good year 2015. Got a new job uh, that I love very much. Uh, 2015 was a good year. And we gotta type this match. Okay, so we're just gonna debug this. I like when I do these kind of uh, you know live uh, debugs here. Um, so let's take a look uh, at our Visual Basic, and let me bring this back over here. All I did was have a break, and so this is a real simple fix here. So you'll notice I'm referencing D3, D4, and D5, and so if you look, D3, four, and five are not the values that I want. They're in E3, E4, E5. So if I move these over here. Let's just move those over. So now I'm getting the values in D3, D4, and D5. So if I hit refresh report now, hopefully I'll get California here. Okay, so it's gonna give me this. Do I approve running the native query? And the reason it does this is because, again, um, you know, you're sending a query over to SQL Server. Someone, if they were nefarious, could um, edit this code, send like a delete, uh, statement over there and really screw things up. So that's why I would recommend that you use this for your own kind of internal efficiencies. Don't package this up as a product to send out, but let's go ahead and hit run here and you'll see I get California. So that's all it was. I was referencing the wrong cells. I copied them over. So D3, four and five are there and this works perfectly now. Now here's something you may want to uh, add as well. Notice how if I um, change my column with uh, values here. Whenever I run this again, refresh, see how it, it changes? I don't want it to, uh, to do that. So where can I go to get that to change? So I'm gonna, gonna go into table design, right? Let's take a look at properties and let's uncheck adjust column width. So let's uncheck that. And so now if I change my width here and refresh the report, it will stay well here. <laughs> You're like, did you really refresh it? Let's go back to Georgia. Let's refresh the report, right? Run it. And then you'll see the width stays. So that's something that you'll want to, uh, uh, to check or uncheck, I should say. Another check that you'll want to do, you'll see I'm Georgia uh, for the year of 2015. Just make sure that your SQL query um, is returning what you expect here. So 63,826 
for my quantity. And so if I go into SQL Server, you'll see 63,826 is the sum of my, uh, my quantity. I didn't alias it, but um, you know, that is what I expect. So that is good. Always double check your work. So I'm in my fancy uh, cleaned up version, same underlying code, but I wanna show you this. You can also go in here to the developer tab uh, and in add-ins, if you want that date picker, here you see I have my add-ins, but I can go to the store here. And so if I search for date here, I have this mini calendar and date picker. You can add that. And that is what this is here. If I ever wanted to, again, change the uh, date overwrite. So you just kind of select the cell you want and then it'll overwrite so that's a fancy little addition you can have here i uh, got some uh, some bands that that update simple enough to do and so as i said earlier because you know this is not something that i would hand out as a finished product it's more of an internal efficiency for you instead of having to go into sql server what i would do also is for my visual basic uh, go into, and this is the one that I'm working with here, I can go to VBA project properties and protection, and I can password protect this code. So no one can come in here and alter the SQL and, you know, do some nefarious things. So that's something that you might want to think about. Put a password on here, lock it down as well. Again, it's, it's easy enough to crack. Um, you know, you can find, um, uh, password crackers here on the uh, the internet that would crack those passwords, but this is really just going to keep Bob from accounting from uh, nosing around. It's not going to stop a hardcore hacker. But in any event, this has been Anthony Smoke showing you how to create a worksheet and connecting it to SQL Server using parameters. So again, shout out to uh, Todd Schultz for leaving that uh, comment. You wanna hit that super thanks, Todd. Uh, it would be appreciated. So as always, this is Anthony Smoke. Get out there, do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching everyone.